I focus my attention on the target and think I'm going to brainwash this person. If I can get the target to answer me after I do that, the effect is complete. So he's got to prep himself for it. That's so key because it means he can like turn it off. Otherwise, it would be a nightmare. I've never tried it before, but I think it's probably impossible to brainwash many people at once. That could be the, the extension of his powers. I can show the target the word Suyu Asui and order them to write it because they can see it. But I can't ask them what your name is and get them to answer. Why does this make me think of Death Note? You just gotta give credit to the show for like the intricacies of the quirks. You know, they're all so well thought out and I'm sure this will be important and I'm sure I'll forget it <laughs> in, cre in key moments. But isn't it hard when people learn about your quirk? Right, this is super key insight. That's why I have this. You got the vocal encoder, which people could also figure out, though it helps. You gotta be unbeatable with that thing. Until people and figure it out. Start! <laughs> Well, that was fast. But he's such a ringer, like in key situations. You gotta keep him a secret, except for when villains emerge, you know what I mean? Whether or not this mask is effective. That's the strategy. Depends on me. Right. It's not just the ability, it's his smarts. He's gotta pick his moments. Go! Kun? <laughs> I'm guessing Shinzo Kun, maybe? He brainwashes you if you answer him, but you can break free. I heard about his quirk from my classmates. Too many people know already. Too many people already know. That was a cool shot <laughs> for Kaminari. You got a good grip there, bro? Not, yeah, you don't want to grab, grab hold of him. It's a terrible idea. I feel like Kaminari's next. For students who haven't had the spotlight yet, but, but will. Like Kirishima. Kirishima really got to shine last season. Though we can't all be as great as Kirishima, so maybe that's asking too much. Why aren't you passed out? Master Su, come on! Don't you worry. Huh? Trust our classmates. They've got this. Was there ever any doubt? Nope. Pretty tough. In that case, what? we've had tougher. <laughs> yeah. Well, that didn't take much. Kirishima can we'll take him. Sure to stop this guy. Fly to me, little ones. <laughs> oh my God, that's just playing dirty. Insects? I don't know if I can handle that. How did you miss him? He can wait. He can change size. Up whenever he activates his power. That's really clever. Yeah, there's no way he was gonna, gonna power his way through Kirishima. It's a size quirk as well, it's not just a strength quirk. I've spotted a lost sheep plummeting from the sky. Ooh, she's kind of terrifying. Oh no, I can't believe they caught him! What did that tell you about having faith? The odds are still even. No, they're definitely not. Why? Who does he have his eye on? And smell. Some of these, like, what would you call them? Combination quirks? Like, people who are animals and therefore have the abilities of the animals or related abilities to the animals like Sue are kind of awesome. They just bring so many things with them. Sue has always, in her way, seemed like one of the most overpowered characters just because of the range of stuff that she has. Beast guy seems to be in a similar category, but also with, like, intense physical strength. There really is a lot of room in this world for, like, disappointment and jealousy. More than the real world, maybe. Because some people have one quirk and their quirk is less impressive than Sue or Beast's worst quirk lamest quirk you know what i mean how do you cope with that in a society that is just absolutely obsessed to the point of insanity with heroes and how do you be quirkless I know what you're trying. pepperoni bullets i can't believe she captured me is this love Leave it is love <laughs> this is stronger than it was at the sports festival he got better shinzo is probably the one baku is focusing on he's the real real power card here i think but it's obvious class B is setting themselves up for a win. Yeah, right, they got real stakes in this, the teachers. He's having a good time. Yeah, <laughs> a little, little too much fun there. That's where they get it from, no wonder. Shinzo, I'm afraid your inexperience is showing. Give him a break, it's his first battle. <laughs> this is the first time in this course. He has so much ground to, to catch up on, so much ground to cover. It's really unfair. This is my fault. I should have been able to move faster to capture them. Which makes it a sort of fascinating opportunity for Shinzo because I feel like he could get away with that. He might easily be able to get that kind of pass from people where it's like, we don't expect all that much of you. You haven't had anywhere near the experience that the rest of Class 1A has had. You haven't had near-death experiences with villains 8,000 times. And there's a sort of comfort and safety in that, but I feel like that's not Shinzo's style. Just from what little we've seen of him, I feel like that's not the kind of inner monologue he'd have. His inner monologue would be how to get there as soon as possible. And also it seems like Aizawa is his mentor, perhaps. And that's a perfect pairing because first of all, they're quirks match, but just because Aizawa is the kind of person who would not let that off the hook. You know, he would not let you slide on that. He would expect Shinzo to catch up, which is probably exactly what he needs. One's expectations of oneself are so critical in determining not just actions, but just how we evaluate ourselves, whether we're satisfied with with life, you know? I think there's a lot of 
anxiety that results unconsciously even from not setting adequately high expectations, which isn't the same thing as high expectations. It just means sufficiently high expectations. And a lot of times that occurs to avoid a similar type of pain on the other extreme, which is setting expectations very high and then not being able to meet them and sort of dealing with that discomfort. I feel like it's important to know that there's even a scale. You know, sometimes you meet people and those people are performing at a certain level where you didn't even know that level existed. But as soon as you know that level exists, you immediately recalibrate your own expectations of yourself and your own desires. You know what I mean? That's one of the benefits of role models or having high functioning people as friends, let's say. It has a way of like raising the ceiling so quickly that you just blast through the things you you once thought were the goal. Perspective plays such an important role and who is going to give him a higher perspective than Aizawa? The question is just like, can Shinzo himself follow through on it? No, we should be apologizing. You ended up having to fight the other team. It's a common thread among the UA students. I blame myself for not they all take the maximum strategy. amount of responsibility. Yeah, don't beat yourself That's up. just a, a show-wide thing. I know you said earlier you weren't planning on making friends. But I like you, Shinso. You're totally <laughs> a future hero. Welcome to 1A, am I right? I have an idea. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but <laughs> it's about to get sticky. I fear I must whip you now. This lady's intense. What? I'm not sure what it means. But there are three Asuis heading our way. Yeah, they're all covered with her slime. I must chastise them. Oh no. Oh, please don't. Or do. <laughs> she brings a lot with her. It's not just her quirk. It's like her entire thing. Her entire vibe. She's got a personality. So let's talk quirks. I'll go first. This is a throwback. Obviously I can jump high. She looks younger. Are they aging and I'm not even realizing it? That's Man, this is this is a nostalgia trip for sure. Toxic mucus saves the day! Mineta remembers. During the fight earlier, one of them stuck Kashishida's pocket. You were really watching carefully, huh? Amazing, Sue! I would say it's we'll more amazing item. that you didn't notice yourself. Sue is destined for leadership. She's always there. Like, she always has a good head on her shoulders, always is calm. I see you, Sue. Ideally, we would know where his other two classmates are. Zealot Lady is kind of a threat, though. She just has her vines and her beliefs everywhere. Why is she so terrifying? She gets texts. Damn. My hero name is Deljevodon. Oh, they all get texts today. We don't know who it is. Kaminari could be coming in hot. Right about that. <laughs> This is our second matchup, but we've learned Electric cannot be grass. Though we should have already known that from Pokemon. It's kind of awesome, not gonna lie. She's sort of like plant Todoroki with the way some of her attacks work. Just walls of matter, material. Todoroki is way more chill, though. The shield will cast it aside. But it's this is class 1A. Attack. They've learned their lesson. Kaminari knows this and oh, is prepared. This. Yeah. My power shoots straight for it! Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so much for learning, and then he died. Hurry up and get your vines ready. Right. Where are the others hiding? What are her vines not ready? No! That wasn't me talking just now. Oh, got him. You know what else is really clutch? It doesn't have to be a question. That's such a huge deal. Even he can be clever. That's the difference experience makes. This is the hero course. Yeah, he's learning a lot from this one exercise. <laughs> You can do it, Shinzo. I feel like, honestly, the test of whether or not you'll make it in UA is not even your ability necessarily, although there's probably a minimum you need. Although maybe not, because Invisible Girl's there. Is your outlook, the way you process failure, what your goals are and how much energy they give you towards, you know, working to your maximum, basically, to your plus ultra. Because they're all just so good, as is evidenced once again by their, their dialogue this episode and their internal monologues, at taking everything and not letting it affect them negatively. It's all just like information for them they extract. Things that work, but also things they can improve on. Things they learn in real time. It's all put to its optimal use. There's no or very little wasted energy about how bad they are, about how they'll never make it or how they don't deserve it, right? You don't you don't get that very much. You know, earlier I was joking about how they take the maximum amount of responsibility. There's a weird danger there because responsibility also can carry the connotation of blame. And I think it's very, very important to make that distinction, right? Like taking responsibility for something is not about going down a path that leads you to something like your intrinsic worth being in question or you being absolutely incapable ever of doing something or being something. Those are limiting factors in my opinion. Those things can be kind of poisonous, but seeing everything as sort of within the parameters of your control and your choice, and then not putting obstacles in front of yourself, but using those things to 
motivate yourself or to eliminate pain points or to make yourself more aerodynamic, so to speak, in life. That's sort of where it's at for me. And I think that's exactly the quality that so many of these students have and partly what makes it so inspiring. Okay, fine. New plan is to wake Shiozaki up. Oh! <laughs> I can jump faster than you can shoot your scale bullet. Oh, well, this trash talking from Sue. Kind of awesome. I love the, the Sue shine this episode. <laughs> Damn. Definitely Shinso. Impressive. Right, he's also really physically vulnerable. Hence the need for like an Aizawa scarf. You're pretty good. I won't fall for that, Bruce. But he makes her head taught me well. Yeah, there you go. He needs like a little extra physical edge. I would love to see more of this relationship with Aizawa. I mean I just want more Aizawa is the bottom line. Let's be real. Look out, Apocope! I won't let you brainwash me ever again! Huh. That might not actually Apocope. be Come his on. voice. Duck, please! <laughs> <laughs> wow. He got knocked out by a classmate. Okay! Yes. Makako saw it all coming, of course. Also, in Kaminari's quick thinking let him shine. That's why he did so well. Right, right. He didn't, like, do it himself. If I had to pick an MVP, honestly, I'm going with Sue. Brainwashing. It's an even more annoying quirk than I thought it was before. <laughs> <sighs> Bakugo approves, that's what that means. You can't help the things your heart longs for. That's something that... Another thing that, uh... Deku and All Might have in common. Dream. Everything they touch turns to gold. I feel like that fight was key in that season. What happened here? You have sinned, my child. <gasps> you are impure. Repent, <laughs> heathen. <laughs> it is a little weird, though. Like, you wake up having done stuff that you didn't want to do? It's questionable. I need to grow strong enough to become a pro hero on my own. Yep, perfect fit for 1A. The team of Class A plus Shinzo are the winners! It's always, always gonna be that way. I never doubted. <laughs> not for a second. I mean, not only do I have more affinity for Class 1A, just having spent more time with them, I'm always gonna bet on experience. I know the way they're approaching this narratively is there's two different styles. One is the book learning, traditional approach to education. The other is the sort of baptism by fire, real hands-on life experience, and they both have their pros and cons. But 1A's just been through way too much. And just from my own experience, I feel like two weeks in an industry actually working in the industry is worth like a year of studying it in school and that's true for a lot of things or perhaps another way to look at it is it depends on your phase so like i think learning things in a classroom let's say or through books or whatever can be extra effective at an early stage of development you get the broad strokes of what something is really quickly through that but then if you really want to get the deep understanding i feel like that's where the hands-on stuff comes in like i started studying korean in 2000 and 14 and i've been on and off studying it since then but now i have a girlfriend who doesn't speak english and i've learned more from my five or six months with her than i did in all that time but i wouldn't have been able to have this learning experience if i hadn't done the the groundwork you know what i mean they wouldn't be able to perform at all in the real world with villain crises if they hadn't had their classroom experience right but 1a has also had a lot of classroom experience and they've had that plus the actual battle experience where they've been tested they've had their personalities groomed there's this weird like x factor i think to doing anything or to, to work or to tasks that is hard to to teach it's an intangible it's something similar to common sense although that doesn't quite capture it it's something like the ability to make decisions and form connections and steer yourself towards paths in an unknown because anything complex is going to have a lot of unknowns and you sort of have to have that ability to do things autonomously i think like they're making decisions all the time and people with a lot of knowledge can still lack that and that can become an issue so i'm going to make a bold prediction very bold prediction and say class 1a sweeps this series i feel a little bit weird saying that i'm not fully confident in that but i feel like that's that's the most fun prediction i can make and i definitely do feel like class 1a will win most of them so why not go bold but yeah that's it for now i'll see you guys next time when class a continues this path of overwhelming domination over class b